Good morning. Whoops, I'm being reminded of something very important. Amplification. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship service here at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Healdsburg. I'm the Reverend Sally Haynes Hubble, and it is wonderful to welcome you to this fifth Sunday in Lent, the final Sunday in Lent. Um, if you would like to follow along with our worship service, you can find a bulletin on our website, www.stpauls-healdsburg.org. And now we will sing our opening hymn together, number 170, To Mock Your Reign, O Dearest Lord. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That, among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you, 
as he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus is troubled 
because he's uneasy with the future he sees. Who among us wouldn't be troubled if we were in Jesus's place? And who doesn't know what it feels like at some point in our lives to be uneasy with our options and the future we see? In this moment, Jesus, it, this is a Jesus that we can relate to very well. What exactly do we mean by soul? We Christians are in the business of saving souls, right? As Episcopalians, I think we say that with a certain sense of irony. There's a slight hesitation when we talk about saving souls, maybe even a little wince. We typically don't see ourselves as souls to be saved, as much as pilgrims on a journey that will lead us, we hope and pray ever closer to God. Richard Rohr, the great Christian teacher and writer, describes this well. He says, at our best, we help people discover their souls instead of save them. My sense, he says, after being a priest for almost 50 years, is that most Christians are trying to save something that they have not even found. He goes on to say, we are naturally healed in this world when we know things center to center, subject to subject, soul to soul. And then he helpfully tells us what he thinks a soul is. He says, I think of soul as anything's ultimate meaning, which is held within. Soul is the blueprint inside of every living thing that tells it what it is and what it can become. When we meet anything at that level, we will respect protect and love it. Now think about that in the context of Jesus saying, my soul is troubled. Here he is on the cusp of Holy Week, one step away from the conclusion of his time on earth as a normal unresurrected human being. And his soul is troubled because he's facing the opposite of respect, protection, and love. The rejection of Jesus and the violence that he faces is a rejection of the center to center, subject to subject, and soul to soul connection that he offers. It's a rejection of the healing that's possible when we meet God on that level. Rather than connect with this man, Jesus, and see the presence of God within him, he will be pushed away and seen as other, as expendable, and even as dangerous. His offer of connection will be met with rejection and crucifixion. Of course, his soul is troubled. There are many troubled souls in the world right now and here in this country for exactly the same reason Jesus' soul is troubled. Think about that in the context of racial violence. Some people are so threatened by the idea of a common center to center, subject to subject, and soul to soul core in all of humanity that they would rather kill than connect. That is a lot like what Jesus faces today in our scripture, in this final week of Lent. Now, as Holy Week is fast approaching, we come to a thin place. Not thin, is in stretched thin, although it may feel that way, and certainly not thin is in without much substance. I mean a thin place where what separates heaven and earth is thin and there's to be touched at a deep level, a soul level by the presence of God. 
A thin place is a holy place, and that's where our readings are pointing us today. Take a good look at our Old Testament lesson from Jeremiah. Remember, we began Lent five weeks ago talking about the law. All of our readings were in one way or another about God's covenantal relationship with his beloved people and how that relationship has been battered about through the generations from Adam and Eve to the Israelites in the wilderness of their new, newfound freedom. None of that turned out as intended because the opportunity for connection with God fell short. And so today, we see a new approach. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with my people. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. Although you wouldn't know it from this passage, Jeremiah is one of the harshest and most pessimistic of all the Old Testament prophets. He's writing at a time when things seem to have totally gone to hell for Israel due to their internal conflicts and also defeat from the outside. And yet, he is the source of some of the most beautiful love poetry in the Bible. I can't hear what he says today without going soft inside, which I think is exactly the point. The law written on stone tablets has been broken. Stone has no resiliency. It's brittle and rigid, and people can always just move on with the cares of life and ignore it. And so now, this covenant with God will be made of tougher stuff. It's going to be formed out of love itself and born out in tender human flesh. It will be impossible to walk away from this covenant. There will be no turning our backs on it because it will be within us. We will all know the Lord because our relationship with God will live within us. Remember what Richard Rohr said, we are naturally healed in this world when we know things center to center, subject to subject, and soul to soul. When we meet anything at that level, we will respe respect, protect, and love it. That is the point of God coming to us in human flesh in Jesus of Nazareth, and in our own flesh. You see, Jeremiah is moving us into the territory of soul. He's taking the law and moving it from being something external and abstract into the thin place where it's touching us and touching God at the same time. This is right where we are supposed to be at the close of Lent. We've been on a journey these past five weeks of letting go of all kinds of illusions of strength. Our fantasies of being strong like rocks and discovering the strength of saying, I'm sorry. This season is all about recognizing the kind of strength Jesus shows us. The strength that we discover when we're willing to be vulnerable and accept 
that the cost of love, the cost of connection, is to sacrifice our stony facade. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Be wheat, Jesus is saying to us. Let your hard outer shell die and see what happens. Hopefully, we are coming to the close of more than just Lent come Eastertide. Hopefully, the season of COVID tide is also coming to a close. It's been bigger than Lent, a lot longer, and we have shared it with the entire world. When coming to terms with our vulnerability, a pandemic is quite a teacher. As painful as it's been, let us hope that it's also taught us to value connection and compassion, to value it more than we have before. We hope and pray that this has been a season of wheat grains falling to the earth and bearing new fruit for harvest in due time. And we know that in the life Jesus offers us, all manner of healing is to be found. Here's what I take from all of this. The power that Jesus shows us is the power of love. It's heart power, soul power. It comes entirely from his willingness to bear whatever wound his undying love will cost. What leads to his death is that he won't let anything stand in the way of his love. No threat, no argument, no religious or political power. No matter what, he is going to love. That is his power, and that is the triumph of Easter. The love of Jesus is a thousand times stronger than the bitter, than the brittle power bound up in any stone even the stone walls of the temple. One thing I do know for certain, this place where we find ourselves today, no matter how vulnerable, sin-sick, or weary we feel, is exactly where Jesus is. He shares our world that suffers the violence of rejection. He dwells in the spaces between us as we live out this time of physical separation. He shares our troubled souls and knows our willingness to make a new and fruitful beginning of core-to-core, soul-to-soul connection with our siblings and fellow citizens of every hue. Jesus is here with us in this very spot in this very hour. My soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. The hour he is speaking of is before us all, and it's an awfully vulnerable place to be seeing the cross in front of us. But unless we are willing to offer up our brittle toughness and let it die for the sake of love, unless we are willing to let our souls be troubled and love anyway, this hour will pass us by and the fruit it promises will come to naught because it is from that death that our resurrection will come. Amen. Let us together.
together affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. In our diocesan cycle of prayers, we pray for Good Shepherd, Susanville, St. Michael's Alturas, and Trinity Church, Sonoma. We also pray for the congregation of the Calvary Chapel River Fellowship preparing the community meal this week. That, that your, your name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and the sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world especially President Joe, Governor Gavin, Supervisors James and Linda, and Mayor Evelyn. That there, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Susan, Juanice, Jean, Kathy, Jill, Jim, Michael, Deborah, Robin, Marjorie, Anne, Suzanne, Richard, Alice, Christine, JP, Tony, Rich, Brad, Claire, Carol, Ruth, Jamie, Twin, Ashley, Vernon, Anita, Mark, Jim, and those we name either silently or aloud. Be with Lisa and Jack as they make their journey to Little Rock today. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest especially Ruben Perez Zuniga. This week, we remember Chris Bjorklund and Terry Holmes, in whose memory the altar flowers are given. Let, Let light perpetual, perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May and we also come, come to share in your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Please take a moment to share any prayer petitions you may have, either silently or loud. with Bishop Ranch as it starts a new chapter. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. It is great to be here with you. Um, I'm sure that if you have been watching us regularly, you are seeing some exciting changes in your camera view. We are just making such incredible and beautiful progress in this um, construction project that we have undertaken. And next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And we will um, be gathering together for sort of an indoor, outdoor, mostly outdoor, for an outdoor service. We will gather first of all in the plaza for the Liturgy of the Palms and then process through the church and then out the side door. Marcus, can you sort of turn the camera so people can see out that door? We'll have the paper removed from the floors and all of the protective covering. It's gonna be, you're gonna be blown away by how gorgeous it is. And then we're, we're setting up an altar on our new cement slab outside. Um, and we'll have chairs out there and that's where we'll worship. Overflow seating will be in the church proper, socially distanced, of course, wearing masks. And we can sing outdoors. We cannot sing inside, but we can sing outside. So we are very much looking forward to having a, our first worship service in this space in over a year. It's, it's gonna be great. Um, so that's on the 28th, um, Palm Sunday. Please uh, stay tuned for all of our Holy Week services. We have Monday, Thursday at 6.30. That will be online only. Good Friday at noon, again, online. Um, you'll get links from our, um, our mailing, our email. And then the Easter Vigil on Saturday night at 8 p.m. That is a shared service with St. Paul's Incarnation, St. John's Petaluma, St. Stephen's, St. Patrick's. Um, we're all coming together and sort of sharing different pieces of it. Our organ and Paul will have a prominent place there. Um, we're going to be lighting a fire out front, and it's going to be on Zoom. So you will receive a link. It's going to be a little different than the way we've been broadcasting services. And then on Easter Sunday, again, we will have an altar set up outside. Please join us. Invite your friends. Overflow seating in the church. We can sing outdoors. Um, it's going to be a glorious day. I confess I don't quite have a picture of how this outdoor indoor worship is going to work, but I'm confident that it will. We will join together, and Jesus will be here with us. So much to look forward to. Meanwhile, our regular um, Wednesday service is continuing, 5.30 at the Paul Modern Gallery. This weekend, next week, Holy Week as well. Um, our homeless ministries are continuing. Life at St. Paul's is ongoing. Following this service today, we will have our Zoom coffee hour from 11.15 to 12. And then at 12 o'clock, the doors of the church will be open. Please come in and receive communion in person if you would like to do that. Whew, that's a lot of announcing. I can't imagine there's anything else to say. Birthdays. 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 Let's move on to birthdays. We have a lot of birthdays. We do. We've got some really important birthdays here. <laughs> Jane Snibby, uh, it's her birthday, one of the priests at Good Shepherd. Our own Paul Blanchard, and isn't it Jim's birthday too? 
his is probably in the next week this year. Sometimes they fall in the same week, sometimes they okay. don't. Okay, all right, well, today we have Paul. Uh, Kathy Baskin, Kristen Foster, Danielle Murphy, and Ann Carney. Please join together as we say our birthday blessing. Watch Love over your children, children O Lord, Lord, as their, their days, days increase. increase. Bless and, and guide, guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them, them when they stand. stand. Comfort them, them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And, and in their, their hearts, hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering to God. Amen.
formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepare the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us, the body of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and hearts in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.